23 so far. 9,000 trucking companies already into the year 2023 have uh, bellied up. Yeah, they've uh, turned in their authorities, which means that they are no more. So, Stephen, a moment ago, I was asking you about a comment on one of our videos about somebody wanting to know about whether we should or we become our own brokers. Um, and you talked a little bit about that and how a lot of people are doing that. A lot of truckers are doing that. But that creates a whole job in itself. Well, yeah, because you cannot become a broker. And just get loads for your one. You have one truck, and you're going to become a broker. It's that's a whole job itself because you got to have insurance. You've got to be bonded, and you're not just going to be able to broker one load. You know, uh, it's not going to work that way. You know, if you're going to become a broker, you're going to have expenses. You're going to have to have insurance. You got to be bonded. And then uh, when you go broker loads, they're not going to broker you anything unless you take the whole uh, the whole thing and you take 10, 20 loads and you, you get them out there. And that's how brokers work. They move freight. That's what brokers do. They move freight. And so if you become a broker and you think that you're going to become a broker and be a one-man show truck driver and a broker all in the same seat, not gonna, it's not going to work that way. You're going to either do, do either or. And uh, if there is somebody out there that can do uh, brokerage and sit in the seat and drive the truck at the same time, uh, I'd like for him to, uh, him or her or whoever it is, uh, pop their head up and tell me how they do it because I can't see how they so can you uh can you go to the channel comments real quick um and and read the comment you don't have to read the name but just read the comment go to the channel comments and just read the comment what comment under it's the comment that we're talking about it's uh, it, it the comment was made under the video from the frying pan from the fire to the frying pan There's a comment, and that's why we're talking about. Uh, somebody had made the, said that uh, they were reading about freight brokers. Just go up and just go to the video from the frying pan to the fire. Somebody had made the comment that they were reading up about freight brokers and it looked pretty easy which I'm not so sure about that I'm not so sure that I mean it said well it looked pretty easy I know this is going to sound crazy but I was looking up on the computer how to become a broker it isn't e it isn't difficult at all you and Miss Ruthie should become a broker you know it is you know how it you know how it is. Pay people more. People will come to you. Something to check out and maybe a new business adventure. You certainly have the experience and know how. Why not? Time to stay home and pay others and let them work for you all. Look into it. Look into it. Uh, it, it. It doesn't appear that it's that difficult. Pay better wages and the truckers will come to you. Uh, I have no desire to be a broker uh, simply because the way I see it, you know, to be a broker, you got to be a liar and you got to be a thief. And so I think those are the number two, number those are the two qualifications you got to have to be a freight broker, a liar and a thief. And I'm not willing to be a liar and I'm not willing to be a thief. I gave that stuff up a long, long time ago, and I don't want to have it back. 
and I certainly don't want a job where those are your two top qualifiers. So thanks, <laughs> but no thanks. <laughs> Well, address the issue of this individual saying that it looks like an easy job. Uh, well, I, I would say that uh, sitting in front of a computer and dealing with very mad and angry and foul language with uh, stinky old truck drivers uh, every day and, and worrying about that freight getting there and getting it there safely is not a needs a job. I would imagine freight brokers are very stressed out. Uh, I know Linda, she gets up before daylight and is working and she works until after daylight. Uh, and she has her husband working with her and uh, she now has her son working with her. I, I mean, it, it, sure, there's a lot of reward as far as it being easy. I don't know. I don't see a freight broker being easy. There's a lot of responsibility you know, and, and you got to do a lot of negotiating uh, with factories and uh, shippers and uh, uh, receivers. And uh, you're constantly on the phone. Your, your phone is constantly ringing off the hood. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I mean, that's a very demanding job. And uh, again, people would call it negotiation, but I call it lying and stealing. And uh, that's not something I want to do. Uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate the thought. But what I really need is I, just, I need contract break. So I need, what I need is to work with people, shippers. Uh, I need to work with them directly and cut out. Uh, cut out the middleman. The broker all together. I, 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 that's what I need. I need to cut out the broker altogether. We don't really need a broker. Uh, to me, a broker is not necessary when you work directly with the shipper because the truck is already carrying all the truck, the responsibility. It has all the insurance and, uh, the shipper has to have all the, uh, stuff for them to work with a broker. So, I mean, they're already set up, and so the trucking company is already set up. And so you already have two entities that are set up. All you need to do is move the guy out of the middle and for you two to come together and uh, get rid of the broker, and uh, you're saving the, the shipper saving money and uh, the truckers making money because you don't have somebody <coughs> speaking in your behalf, which is all lies and manipulation. And then talking to the truck, truck driver and, and, and stealing all the money that you possibly can so that you can pad your own pockets. Um, so really, again, what truckers need is no brokers. We don't need brokers. There is absolutely no need for brokers. None. Period. All they need. And in fact, there are shippers who work with the load board currently directly. It's called direct freight. And uh, there are shippers who post on the load board currently. Uh, my, I'm saying uh, we, we, they need to get rid of brokers altogether. They make you go broke. Altogether. I mean, you're just, you're just, uh, you're, you're, uh, you're just giving away money to where there is no need for it. You don't need brokers. All you need is shippers to post their loads on the load board. And you need to have somebody in the office. So that's what you're going to have to have. You're going to have to have an employee to uh, to answer these phone calls because there's no way that you're going to be able to do your job and uh, handle that. So, But even though the shipper, it would cost them less money answering phones than it would be for the money that they're losing and going to all these brokerage companies because brokerage companies is a multi mega hundreds of billions of dollars a year business. And if you think about it, hundreds of almost six eight hundred billion dollar business brokerage is in the United States. And so imagine if that was fed right back in the trucking companies. I mean you know, one thing you never hear about, you don't hear brokers, uh, brokers, people, freight brokers, you don't hear them complaining about their wages. 
Hmm. You don't ever hear them saying, I'm having a hard time getting by. You don't ever hear that. Why? It's because they're stealing all the money. So they're modern. You don't need them. Are they, would you, would you call them modern day tax collectors like in the biblical times? Modern day tax collectors. Uh, 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 that's the job to have. I mean, I mean, uh, the job itself, like I said earlier, it's, it's, a, it's a big time job. But uh, the, the money that they get out of it is not theirs. They're taking money that does not belong to them. And they, they go and they tell the shipper, hey, we, we got to have $4.30 a mile. That's what the trucks are needing. That's what they require. We're not going to be able to move the freight unless you pay that. So the so the the shipper pays them four dollars and twenty cents a mile, and then the truck driver calls up. Hey, I seen this load that you have posted. Can I inquire about it? Sure. Well, it pays a dollar eighty a mile. Wow. And it weighs fourteen thousand pounds. And uh, and uh, and you say, well, is that as high as you're going? That's it. There's no more money in it. That's there's no more money. That's all there is. Well, okay. And you'll have dumbass truck drivers that say, "Well, okay, well I'll book it." <laughs> you know, and and then th th that spoils them. And then and that they, they go, "Oh, see, I could sell loads for a dollar a mile," and them dumbass truck drivers will do it. <laughs> and them shippers, they'll pay me four dollars a mile. Oh, I'm raking it in, and they rake it in too. Especially when it's times like this, when see right right now what's happening to the industry, they're calling it a bloodbath because there uh, because of the COVID, it really backed things up, and so there was more freight than there was trucks. Well, so they ended up having to pay more money to get all this freight moved. And what happened is a lot of people brought brought new authorities and bought trucks and came out here on the road. But now freight has slowed down, a uh, way down, below average down. And what and now what's happened is you have an industry with way too many trucks in it. So you have all these trucks. They're like, oh, I got all these truck payments to make. Blah, blah, blah. And they're brand new. And they don't have their trucks paid up. So they're willing to haul for anything. They don't want to go belly up. So they'll haul it for anything. Well, what happens is that these brokers are going, look, they'll haul it for anything. I can get people to haul straight for a dollar a mile. Well, and that just, that's like, and they see that happening because that's what they do. They watch the load board just like we do. And they see that it's happening and, and they lower their rates, keep lowering their rates, lowering their rates. And, you know, they just, you know, even though they haven't contacted the shipper and, and that shipper isn't paying any less, he's still paying the same thing he did a year ago. But you're hauling it for $3 less a mile. And so that's the sad thing. So, so that comment. That's, what that's, that's why I always say don't haul cheap freight because what happens is it, it, it becomes, it, this is what happens. Whenever freight slows down and you keep hauling that cheap freight and all the brokers are saying, look, they're moving freight for $1.80 a mile. Uh, why do I got to pay $3 a mile when I can sell it for $1.80 a mile? Hey, that's like uh, $2,000 more in my pocket per load. Right. Hey, man, I'll be a millionaire by the end of the year. You know? <laughs> right. You know, even Mexicans, one thing you could talk about Mexicans, they are hard workers when they come over from Mexico and work out here in these fields. They work hard. But the one thing, if they can't speak English, the one thing that they do know how to do, and that's math. Because they know math. That's the whole reason why they came here, for the money. And uh, so, and the reason why I bring that up, that's the whole reason why them brokers are in there is for the money. Same reason why I drive this truck. It's all about the money. So, you know, I don't drive truck because I like sitting in a hot black truck on the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you're going to be sitting over the weekend there.